don't know if that will update it automatically. I don't think it does. Okay, that's better. Because now I can actually see. You don't need to be able to see the whole image. But you want to see like the area where you would put the building. So now, this one's going to be cool because with like a crazy fisheye. So, I'm going to turn the building like that. Zoom in more. And then for the, the lens, we need to make it like way more warpy. And we're almost looking like up at it like this. So here maybe I get closer to the building. I want it to be kind of like that, but then it's definitely more this way. So what I'm looking at here is these verticals. I'm trying to at least try and match them. Although trees don't grow like perfectly vertical. Maybe we get the tree to be somewhere like that. And we can add that as a scene. And then we can adjust the sun. Typically you would want to match the image. So here it looks like we have this like glow on the top, which is pretty foggy. So here in Enscape, we can try and tint it that way. So thinking I want to try and catch a shadow there. And then for environment, let's turn off our overlay. And now we can try and make this. So see, it's like floating in the air. So for atmosphere, let's add some fog. Let's bring the fog down. like a cloudier sky and then it looks kind of dark there so let's look at our image so it was something like that so here I'm starting to lose some of that so I think this fog is too much It doesn't have to be perfect because in Photoshop you, you can tweak it like a sledgehammer compared to what you can do in here. Like you can go from totally bright to be black. And then what else could we tweak? So I think that's good. Can you change the intensity of the sun? Yeah. Oh. So that would be this guy, the brightness. So you can make it super bright or you can make it like less intense. You could also make it be so that... Um, so shadow sharpness is one of them. And then we can go to like the image here so that the highlights aren't as bright. And then so that your shadows, you can even like totally kill the contrast by doing that or give it more. So see in this sense, I like don't think it really should have a whole lot. And then like saturation, you could even like start to nuke some of it out. But see the problem is like when you get it in Photoshop, you can do that way more. So if you start 
destroying too much of the, like the original image when you get it in Photoshop it's kind of like missing whereas if you get it somewhere where it's like neutral then in Photoshop you can take it in any way you want but if it didn't render it to start with like if you over blew it out you like don't really have anything to work with so I'll get it I try and get it like close but it doesn't have to be a hundred percent there in Blu-ray they have you can change the size of the sun yep so it makes your shadows softer yeah. yeah that's what this one does so if you look at the um shadows sharpness like as you go to the left it makes them smoother as if you had a bigger sun and then if you shrink them down they get harder so it's hard to tell here because you, you see it the most on something like this where it's like the shadow is casted away from the object these are all like really close so those are always be a little bit sharper um, so if that's what you want to see so where's my image saturation maybe we get a little bit more so it's not totally gone and then let's try rendering this one see that looks good and we render and call it close up right. So now we did that, so now let's bring it in. So let's do a file place. So we've got that guy in there. Let's also place the other ones. Even if you don't need them right now, at least they'll line up. So see, now we have like more depth to it because there was more than just the outline. And then you have the material ID, which you can also use to get that out, outer boundary. So for now, you can turn those off. Well, we can do this. So let's grab the black, turn this off. You can click this one and just mask it. Oops, invert it. And then as long as you're moving them all together, it will be just fine. So then we can try and put that there. So if we say that maybe somewhere like that is where we wanted it. And then it's a matter of now we need to sell that like it's actually in there. So we grab, I think we had it somewhere else. If I go back. And to toggle it, you just turn it back on. It will be in the same spot. So see we had it way lower, or maybe it is kind of close to that. So let's bring these three guys down somewhere like that. Close this one out. So here what I would do, I would then come in here and decide kind of which elements you would want to bring to the foreground. that maybe we bring all of this it's kind of like a hard edge I'm just doing like a rough one to start with and then here you can just delete that out so then as you start bringing that back they will start looking more and more like it's there and so the hardest part is, is first is the angle and then once we have that now it would be just a matter of using all those tools we did last time to start getting it to, so that you actually believe that it's there obviously I would do something here so that you don't see this edge like that you could copy like a rock or something and put it there we could grab like a different um, image there you could then start doing like I would adjust the curves on that one first. And try and get that to match. So let me lock it down to only that layer. So 
So see, that's really starting to help. You can then also add like artifacts that weren't really there, like if you wanted to make it look like that tree had cast a shadow on the building, that'd be pretty easy to do. Um, we can then start cutting out. So we can look, that's already helping. And then there's probably something else we can grab in the foreground here, like some of those trees. Or you can make up that there was like leaves. So if we go to here and then we use that maple leaf on 100% opacity and then small and then we start drawing it up like this. See, we can start trying to hide away some of the bottom. At some point, it's not believable because you start seeing like trees underneath it. So in that case, we can't use that part of it because there's trees back there. So then that part you would want to... But what's cool with this is we can zoom in. Now I'm going to switch to black or to white. So then I can bring it back and then we can get like a rough edge there instead of that really smooth edge that we had. So that helps. Oops, I didn't want that one. All of that should be hidden. And then all of this should be revealed. But if you wanted like this rock here, like we can say, let's copy this one and let's do like a clone stamp. So I'm going to move this up to like here and stamp using this to start adding like it to look like rocks. So I guess it needs to be on top of that guy. Oops, I got clipped down. So we can do this, and then maybe we grab from here. Oh, I have a whole lot to work with here. Oops. So you don't have to get it perfect because what I'm going to show you is you can also start creating like a background to this. So maybe we have like a tree branch there as long as it doesn't look too much like this one. Or we could also grab some of this guy so that he goes into there and then you grab some of this. So I'm just trying to build up here. And then we can start adding, so then all this whole side I don't want to see on this layer, so I'm going to hide it away. So now that that starts looking believable, you can start saying, okay, well maybe that should have some sort of effect on the top. We can say... If you want to do that, or we can do maybe like so. What I typically like to do is not this one, but the curves because that will help blend everything together. So we, we could put Frank in there. If you wanted to put like elements in the foreground there to kind of help sell the fact that that's going in front, 
that would also be good. But so you don't really need to build a ton of stuff in order for it to look like part of that same scene. So you, we can go on to this one and adjust the hue and saturation now. And maybe like we start lightening it. Or we do this, so like we really lighten it up. And then you go on to the mask using a normal brush. You set that to 20. And then some of it maybe isn't hidden. It's not so foggy. So you have something like that. So that as it goes up, it start, you start selling the fact that it's in this scene. And since it's, it's cropped down to only there, you can get it to feel like that. You guys have any questions on this? Does that make sense? It's, it's pretty straightforward, but the, the key thing is to think about it as a composition with other images and not that the, the whatever comes out of the renderer is like the final thing. Um, and if you want, you can add the line work on top or the edges or whatever. And then if you wanted this to feel like it was night, all we need to do is come to here. We have that one already. That's going to make our lives a lot easier because we can go file, open, and we could just place them in here. So I recommend doing it like this. Place that one. Oops. I mean... I guess it's okay, but I meant to do the other one. The only one we really need to add is the um, the render. So there you go. And you can see it looks really good because it's already getting all those effects that we added because I kind of dropped it in between two of them. So let's copy it and make it so that it goes right in the right spot. So to do this, I'm going to first select the sky there, mask it off. Oh, invert that. Turn this one off. And click both. And then I'm just going to move it until it snaps right in there. So let's zoom in and make sure I get it right in the same spot. Say if you're close enough zoomed in, Photoshop will snap to it. Smart. Sometimes it's off though, so you got to double check. But since we know they're going to be the same angle, it should be okay. And then we've got those. Let's move that behind this so that it's more like that. Turn that guy on, off. So this, for some reason, is clipping two different layers. So turn that one off, turn these on to there. So that should be what we get. And then since we made this one already, we can replace the layer mask with that one. Now, it's about selling the fact that this is nighttime, right? So we did this before, and it was pretty straightforward. So we can do that again on this one by going 